What's going on, everybody? Jen Mint here, back with another Omnibus haul. We got a nice little mix of trade paperbacks, deluxe editions, and Omnis. Got to give a couple of shout outs here. Big shout out to Valiant Entertainment for sending us the trade paperbacks. Uh, big shout out to Marvel Comics for sending us the Captain America by Remender and Amazing Spider Man Volume 5. And as always, big thank you to Organic Price Books for hooking it up with the Fourth World Omnibus as well as the Blade of Immortal Volume 3. Organic Price Books has quickly become one of the best resources for Omnibus and Collected Edition collectors. They offer pre orders, comparable pricing, amazing shipping, and one on one customer service. Use code GEM to save two dollars every time you shop there and before we jump into this guys if you're enjoying the content make sure to hit that like button also hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss a video we have a big giveaway going on right now so hang around to the end of the video and i'll give you more details on that let's take a look at the trades first we'll take a look at the valiant trades bloodshot which is volume four and it actually has uh issue 12 with the backup story by benny the comic historian we were just on his channel the other day talking about what if episode one and uh, we should be on there every Thursday discussing what if, along with Very Gary and Pressable Defects. And then Shadow Man Volume 1, the new ongoing by Cullen Bunn. All right, so like I said, let's take a look at these Valiant trades first. We have Bloodshot, Book 4. Great artwork on the cover. You got writing by Tim Seeley. You got Pedro Andreo. Uh, and like I said, you have the comic story and backup, which is pretty cool to see uh, the YouTubers getting some love in the industry. So... $15 cover price. It collects issues 10 through 12, uh, along with material from Valiant 2020, the Year of Heroes free comic book day special. So I did start reading this run when it first came out, but I don't know. I think uh, the release schedule of it kind of got a little wonky and I ended up dropping it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything notable from this run, man. It's kind of hard for me to remember what happened here, honestly. I remember Benny's story was like a kind of retelling of the origin of bloodshot which is a uh, the last issue here let's see if we could find it the artwork looks great though i remember enjoying it but like again i think just that release schedule is what killed it for me okay here's the benny story right here yes yeah, he says on the cover right here the comic story and so that's pretty cool and Shadow Man is a current ongoing. This collects issues one through four. I want to say issue four just came out recently. Oh, see, advanced reader's copy, not for sale. Appreciate uh, sending us the early copy, Valiant. So uh, I'm digging this run, man. I love what Cullen Bunn's doing. He's actually doing a lot of stuff that I'm digging right now. A lot of new series. He always has a little bit of a horror element to it. And uh, Shadow Man, yeah, it's a, it's a nice, like... Um, supernatural thriller a lot of cool one and done enemies like i said in my weekly comic book day reviews it kind of reminds me of alan moore's swamp thing in that sense where you'll just have like a one and done villain for that issue but still have the overarching story uh looming behind of the breach of the dead side trying to come through to earth great trippy artwork awesome enemies this enemy was dope too man that got everybody high all around him <laughs> So, uh, guys, if you've missed this in singles and you're and you're down with the Valiant universe, definitely pick up Shadow Man. If you're a Colin Bunn fan, got materials and looks like uh, original pages in the back. Very cool. And we have three trade paperbacks from Marvel Comics. The newly completed Heroes Reborn miniseries. We have Star Wars The High Republic, which I've heard great things about. And, of course, Venom King in Black. It's a, technically volume six of Venom in trade paperback format, but it's the King in Black s series. So let's take a look at it. All right, so for the Marvel trades, Heroes Reborn was a new miniseries by Jason Aaron and Ed McGinnis. It was pretty fun. Uh, Star Wars The High Republic, I passed on it, and then everybody in the comments would always ask me, why aren't I reading it? It's such a great series. And then King of Black uh, by Donny Cates, obviously a must-read. So let's take a look really quick at these um, and see what they're all about. This one's a little bit on the thicker side. I think this was a nine-issue series, if I recall. One through seven, and Heroes Return one. So eight issues, which is like a, a seven-issue miniseries plus an epilogue. This was, uh, what if the world never had the Avengers, basically? What if the uh, Squadron Supreme were Earth's Mightiest Heroes? And what if this weird universe had, like, these amalgamation of characters like Doom and Juggernaut and things of that nature? Um, what if everybody worshipped uh, an evil Marvel villain instead of God? Like, it was pretty out there. It was fun. I mean, 
it's nothing that's going to win uh, an Eisner, I don't think. But um, Ed McGinnis art style, you know, I, I like his artwork ever since the Deadpool days. And uh, Jason Arian, obviously one of the greats. And it's just kind of a fun Squadron Supreme what if type of story. Does have a $35 cover price. And then Star Wars High Republic, like I said, haven't read this title. Uh, this does cost $16, has uh, the five issues. I'm not sure if this ended or if this is an ongoing or what have you. Uh, I remember the book having controversy uh, specifically with like somebody using a lightsaber to like scale down a tree and even the artist came out and said, yeah, that was probably a mistake. We shouldn't have done that or something along those lines. I feel like it's in this first issue here. Yeah, like right here. Anyway, um, but like I said, I heard great things in the comments. Like I missed out on something. So if I find some time, which you know I don't really have much of, maybe I'll... Uh, Take a look at the High Republic and see what's going on. Right now, I'm only reading Darth Vader from the current Star Wars stuff, guys. So, let me know. And then, of course, King and Black. You gotta read Donny Cates' epilogue on the Venom saga. Uh, issues 31 through 35 here. So, actually, okay, I'm mistaken. This is not King and Black. This is just the title of the sixth volume of Venom, which collects issues 31 through 35. So, that's a little bit misleading. <laughs> Uh, it's just the final arc from Venom, which is fine. Uh, it has the King of Black tie-ins, obviously. And that last issue, man, issue 35 was amazing. It moves uh, the Venom character forward as far as Eddie Brock and Dylan Brock and where it's going to go once Al Ewing takes over. So uh, if you missed the singles, trade is out. Personally, I'm hoping for an omnibus. All right, guys, on to the one and only deluxe edition here. We have Blade of the Immortal Volume 3. All right, and on to Blade of the Immortal. This is Volume 3 of the Deluxe Edition. Obviously loving what Dark Horse is doing, introducing me to so many new mangas. These are $50 books, and they all come with this paper that's under the plastic initially to give you a little synopsis of what's going on. Now, if you guys missed uh, my review, I did review Volume 1, and I really enjoyed it, but I just haven't gotten around to Volume 2, and uh, therefore have not read this material yet. But flipping through it, Love the art style. I love how it flows. The, the pacing feels like it's really fast here, which I like because I read so much, man, with weekly comic books. Um, see, even lo looking right here, like it's not full of exposition and dialogue. You kind of let the artwork tell a lot of the story. So when I was flipping through this and stretching that spine out, I was like, man, I should just knock out these volumes real quick. I mean, look at this page. There's like <laughs> hardly any dialogue on it. But the artwork is great. A lot of these mangas, you'll notice that the artwork gets better and better as you go along, right? So it's a little rough maybe in the beginning. But I really liked uh, the lore of Volume 1, and I just got to find some time to uh, to get through Volume 2 and Volume 3 and then get caught up here. So I didn't mention this book at first. This is actually the replacement Superman by Grant Morrison that was... Uh, destroyed famously in the video that I did a few months back. Um, we're going to show the differences between the re-release and the one that I was forced to destroy and uh, just recap why they did a re-release for it. So let's take a quick look, but I already did an overview of this, not going to go too deep into it. All right, guys, real quick. So if you're not aware, DC Comics released Superman by Grant Morrison, but they had a couple of mistakes and they ended up re-releasing it. And what they did was ask you to remove the front cover in order to get your free replacement, which is why I did that. So just uh, real quick, some of the errors. They didn't credit Sholy Fish as one of the writers, so they actually put uh, Sholy on the dust jacket. And uh, what they ended up doing was say Sholy Finch on the original one, and they corrected that here. So they, they made good on it. You got to uh, show some respect for that. And also, there was a page here that didn't have any word bubbles. As you can see here on the left, there was no word bubbles on that whole page. And they did correct that with the word bubbles here. So just kind of wanted to highlight some of the mistakes and changes that happen in this new release. All right, guys, on to some new stuff here. We have a new omnibus from DC Comics. This is The Fourth World by John Byrne Omnibus, his 90s run on the Jack Kirby creation. So let's take a quick look at it. All right, guys, on to the 90s Fourth World by John Byrne Omnibus. You love that cover. You got the spine here looking very much like what they've been doing with like the new 52 spines. And then here's the back. Only a $75 cover price and it collects uh, volume 4 of New Gods issues 12 through 15. Jack Kirby's Fourth World issues 1 through 20. Genesis 1 through 4 along with Dark Side Villains issue 1. New Gods Secret Files 1 and Jack Kirby's New Gods Gallery. 
You got the inside of the dust jacket, a little dark side is action. Biography on the creators, John Byrne, Noel Giddens, Lee Lowridge, and Walter Simonson. You got a beautiful wraparound cover on the hardcover. And then let's jump into this great art style here. And really John Byrne being a quadruple threat on this book. Writing, penciling, inking, and lettering. Great picture of Dark Side here. You have Table of Contents. Get Mr. Miracle here. The introduction by John Byrne that kind of just tells about him uh, coming back to superhero comics after like a seven year hiatus, picking up new gods at his LCS. He only had like issues two moving forward and just becoming such a fan of Jack Kirby's creation uh, and inspired him to want to uh, tackle the team as well. So always interesting to see like uh, the uh, inspiration that creators have when jumping into these runs. Like I said, mo uh, 90s material, not stuff that I'm familiar with. It looks a little bit more accessible than jumping into that thick Jack Kirby fourth world omnibus. So it, it definitely looked interesting to me. I love the art style. It, it looks a little wordy. I don't know if that's how it reads, but I'm interested, man. I always want to uh, get caught up on some dark side stuff. You have uh, the gallery here in the back. Looks good. Got to find some time to read my Omnis, man. The weekly comic books have been draining me. All right, on to the Marvel stuff, guys. We have Captain America by Rick Remender. This was one of the series that I jumped on when I started getting back into reading comics, and I thought it was so out there. I had already known who Remender was from Uncanny X-Force and Venom, uh, and then reading this Cap run was like my first time jumping into a Cap series, and it was super weird with like this alternate dimension that he was in and all these other things, so... Uh, it's funny to see this omnibus printed. It's coming full circle for me. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at it. All right, so here we go. The cover for Captain America by Rick Remender. Here we have our patriotic spine. You also have Dennis Hopeless, who we interviewed on the channel. Bashi, Imonen, Klein, Pacello, John Romita Jr. And here's the back. So this collects issues 1 through 25 from that 2012 run. Uh, what else does it have? Winter Soldier... The Bitter March 1 through 5, All New Captain America, Fear Him issues 1 through 4, All New Captain America 1 through 6, and Hail Hydra. What is this? Issues 1 through 4 by Rick Remender. This one has a $125 cover price. All right, and then a quick synopsis of the run, biography on the creators. This omnibus with a wraparound hardcover as well. Marvel tends to do that with their more modern runs, Captain America and Falcon. And so, like I mentioned, yeah, I picked this one up kind of like, wow, this is what Captain America comics are like. This was so crazy with him, uh, with this sun and this other dimension. And it was just kind of wild and out there. Here's the um, the credits. Issue one right here, if you guys recall when this came out. I feel like I have a little bit of a bump there. Uh, at times, uh, John Romita Jr., you know, his style is his style. It can be a bit blocky at times. But... Um, yeah, the Arnim Zola stuff here was pretty cool. I got back into comics right around this time, around 2012, mainly because of Iron Man. So, uh, you know, the MCU really got me back into reading. And uh, again, this was one of the earlier runs that I was picking up single issues weekly. It was definitely out there. I remember this girl, she was like the daughter of the king of that dimension or something like that. And it was pretty cool. Interesting take on Cap. Uh, and I don't want to spoil too much on the ending and everything, but yeah, I think it's worth the read. If you want a change of pace for Cap, oh yeah, and I loved the Alex Ross. These were these uh, 75th anniversary covers. I was collecting those at the time as well. Very cool to see the sketch along with uh, the variant. So yeah, he has your variant gallery in the back. Yeah, so you get your bonus material here, interior pages, script. This is a pretty uh, packed omnibus, like with contents as far as how many issues you're getting and the bonus material. Pretty cool. All right, guys, then you know I had to save the best for last. The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 5 Omnibus. I got the DM variant, which is that awesome cover from Amazing Spider-Man 151. Love to see them completing these runs, these... Uh, long runs like X-Men, Avengers, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. Even though the spine had a little bit of a design change, still so happy that they're 
following up with these volumes. So let's take a look at Amazing Spider-Man Volume 5. All right, and then Amazing Spider-Man Volume 5. I love how I got the DM of this one because I do collect the DMs of all the Spider-Man ones. I'm pretty sure Omar gets to choose, and he picks the, uh, the regular cover for these. So that works out great. Absolutely love the cover of 151. Iconic. It's up there in an era where I don't feel like Spider-Man had as many keys. I mean, of course, especially since the first 100 issues introduced so many things. Um, the spine, you know, what are you going to do? And here is the back. So this is the original clone saga. You have the one that kind of birthed the idea of the Ben Riley stuff later on. Collecting Amazing Spider-Man issues 143 through 180 with annuals 10 and 11 plus Nova 12 continuing this Amazing Spider-Man run. So we're up to 180 just from AF15 moving forward. And it looks like we're about one omnibus away from catching up to the Roger Stern omnibus. So a breakdown of what this omnibus contains story-wise. Like, again, it talks a lot about the Clone Saga. It talks a lot about uh, villains returning. So that's what I said about, like, key issue worthy. That's how I really got into comics uh, was keys. And this was an era that just didn't seem to have many of them. You get a biography on Jerry Conway taking over the duties from Stan Lee, joined by Len Wein and... Uh, and some more creators, Ross Andrew with the art style, which the art style is great here. A lot of it is like what you see on old school posters and merchandise when you see Spider-Man. So here's the front. Spine is similar to the dust jacket. Then the back. Got the black interior cover. Your splash page of sorts. Uh, the cover for that uh, Clone Saga beginning. I forget the issue off the top of my head. Issue 149, it looks like. Here we have some more credits, table of contents. You got an introduction by Jerry Conway. And then we jump into it. So flipping through this, again, this is like vintage Spider-Man stuff. I think this is like Spider-Man at its best. It's just like such a clean representation of the character and the villains. Like almost like the Silver Age material just redefined and perfected for lack of a better word uh first appearance of uh, tarantula here right all right see great paneling great uh great pages i read the clone saga stuff i remember around that time when i was getting back into comics i i picked up all of the trade paperbacks for the 90s clone saga and then there was a trade paperback for the real clone saga and it collected this material uh, because that's when he first had the clone introduced by the Jackal with the return of Gwen Stacy and uh, killing the clone of Peter Parker and putting him in that smokestack. That all took place during these pages. So uh, cool to get that stuff back here again in this omnibus and really just loving how we're going to end up one day having a complete Amazing Spider-Man run. So very cool. Uh, it does have some other covers in the backs, you know, Treasury Edition covers. Uh, Marvel Tales covers. Let's see. Nice little pinup, 1975. House ads here. I like the calendar. You know, there's some calendars back in the day that could be reused now. There's like a website that shows you <laughs> which ones still line up. All right, here we go. Some more house ads. So this was so cool to see Gil Kane's uh, cover layout for Amazing Spider-Man 151 and then the final original art. So crazy to see how it goes from this sketch and then it gets just so detailed and fleshed out. Looks awesome. Some more covers. Here's those Marvel Tales like reprints like I was talking about like 151 but the Marvel Tales book. Just some more covers. Here's Clone Genesis from 1995 collecting. That's not the trade I had, but. And then it has a, a, the introduction for that Clone Genesis trade paperback. So in 1995, Jerry Conway talking about it. And this is the uh, regular cover. This one's by uh, Paco Medina and Arbitov. All right, guys, that's the haul for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like I said, we got a big giveaway going on for our next subscriber milestone of 150K, and we're giving away the Deja Thoris premium format by Sideshow. All you got to do is be subscribed, leave a like, and comment on this video. Once we hit the milestone, we'll go live the following Sunday, pick a random video where I promoted the giveaway, and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a worldwide winner. 
As always, I appreciate you guys watching, but don't go anywhere. Check out my other omnibus hauls in the playlist to the right and stay minty fresh. Peace.